Temperatures are critical in the seafood industry, obviously for things like freezing the product, but for good food hygiene reasons as well. In the seafood industry, we go as low as minus 80 degrees centigrade when we use a nitrogen tunnel for freezing, and we can get as hot as 200 degrees centigrade when we want to fry a large batch of fish. For food hygiene, the important temperatures are somewhere between these two extremes. Usually in food hygiene, we talk about the danger zone, which are those temperatures above 5 and below 63 degrees centigrade. Here's why. Bacteria are living organisms, and just like you and me, they prefer to be kept warm. If kept at the right temperature, say a warm room, many of them are capable of multiplying once every 20 minutes. Put those same bacteria in a fridge at 4 degrees centigrade, and it takes them 200 minutes to multiply. Put them in ice at 0 degrees, a multiplication can take as long as 400 minutes. At freezer temperatures at, say, minus 18 degrees centigrade or even colder, dangerous bacteria stop multiplying completely. Now, if one of our key weapons against bacteria is to stop them multiplying, you can see that cold temperatures are ideal in this battle. If we take a single food poisoning bacterium and place it in different temperatures, this is what will happen after an 8 hour or 480 minute shift at work. In a freezer at minus 18, we'll have a single dormant bacterium. It hasn't multiplied at all, but it hasn't died either. Freezing doesn't kill bacteria, it just preserves them, like your frozen scampi. In a box of ice at 0 degrees, after 400 minutes, that single bacterium will manage to divide just once to produce two bacteria. In a fridge at 4 degrees centigrade, that single bacterium will now be four bacteria. More than in ice, but still not enough to get too worried about. In a warm room, however, things are a little different. One has become two, two have become four, four to eight, and after eight hours, we have 16,777,216. Now, that can be something of a problem, particularly if they're all on something you're about to eat. Well, that's enough about low temperatures, so let's warm things up a little bit. If we move up the temperature scale to, say, 40 degrees centigrade, there are some bacteria that are uncomfortable at these temperatures, but still many dangerous ones that are just coming into their stride. Some of the worst bacteria are busy making spores or producing toxins at 40 degrees centigrade. Raise the temperature to just over 60 degrees centigrade, and all of the dangerous bacteria are incapable of multiplying at all. This is why the danger zone ends at 63 degrees centigrade. If you keep hot food at this temperature or hotter, then dangerous bacteria just don't multiply and can't create problems until the food cools down again. There is one last important temperature for you to remember, and that's 82 degrees centigrade. This is what we call hot water disinfection, as at this temperature most bacteria will die within two minutes. This is a critical temperature for cooking and reheating hot food. In a fish and chip shop, the chips and fish are easily heated above 82 degrees centigrade, as are the meat pies. Once they're put into the display cabinet, they should also be kept above 63 degrees centigrade, not just for food safety, but let's face it, who wants cold fish and chips? So, to summarise, keep food and food products out of the danger zone as much as possible and keep them as cold or as hot as is practicable.